What's going on? Shout out to all of the progressive, beautiful black folks who are leaving these well-constructed comments on the channel. I love waking up every day to see what you guys put in the comments. So I really appreciate you, nothing but love. So today we're gonna talk about karma is not real. And I put up this video and I'm gonna tell you how I matriculated to not believing in karma and astrology. And I'm going to recommend the book that you should get. It's called The Power of Your Subconscious Mind by Dr. Joseph E. Murray. You can get it on Amazon. So I'm going to tell you some stuff about me that you probably don't know because I've never talked about it. Years and years ago, I used to be very deep into astrology. I mean, it was ridiculous. Like if I met a girl, what's your birthday? And now I go back and I had this book called a book of birthdays, this big, big book. And then I would go look up her birthday and check the chart and see if we were compatible. I was stupid with this. And this was after I was in the boarding house. This was after I had read the power of your subconscious mind. And this was after I started meditating. This is something I clung on to for probably three years after I exited the boarding house. And one of the things that hit me one day, because I had the concepts of the power of your subconscious mind, I had them nailed down and I was activating them. And there was this spot that I was kind of stuck. Because one day I met this girl she was pretty, pretty. The pretty curly hair and those beautiful little duck lips on her. This girl was a stunner. And she was a Pisces. And if you know anything about Pisces, Pisces women typically have really cute feet. And I went ahead and looked up her birthday. And the chart said that we were not compatible. And I was just sitting there like, what? No, 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 no. And I was like, I'm dating this girl because she got them beautiful little duck lips. I mean, you ever see a chick that had these beautiful lips and she had this beautiful white smile? And I was like, I'm dating her. I'm going to date her. So I kept dating her and I kept dating her. And then we actually fell in love. And I would say out of my top 10 relationship, she's in the top five. Beautiful girl, just sweet as the day is long, just beautiful, beautiful person, beautiful personality, beautiful soul, and the sex, wow! This girl had the wet, wet. I mean, literally, I could just touch her and she would be dripping. It was just a good relationship. And then that relationship made me look at my previous behavior. I was like, I wonder how many good relationships I missed out because I was uh, form fixated on this astrology stuff. And it made me kind of look back and I was like, okay. So at that point, I decided to let the astrology stuff go. And karma is something that I used to believe in. And once I fully, and this is something I want to teach because it's a process. Once I fully activated my mind, because remember I told you that I was meditating and I saw some crazy stuff, right? And then uh, I haven't meditated like that since because it scared me. Uh, call me a punk. I, I, I'll deal with it because I was just like, that was just spooky. And I noticed that my life took a quantum shift when I let the karma go and I want to let the astrology go. My life leveled up. Because this is the time I got the job at Business Environment. This is when I was dating Miss Duck Lips with those, I mean, the, the lips were so cute. <laughs> oh my God. I remember one morning, she spent the night over and she just kind of rolled over. You ever date a chick that is absolutely beautiful with no makeup? And she was just rolling up. She was like, mm. I should have married that one. Straight up, I should have married that one. That was a mistake letting her go. Um, I went into, a, like I said, a quantum shift. Like it was working in business environments. So I was working at Pendle Systems. And then when I got to, I was working at 
rent a crate, excuse me, and I work in that business environments. And when I got to um, business environments, I made in my first five months twice what I made at rent a crate and panel systems combined. So I went into this big, big shift. I was starting to make money because I was holding myself accountable and I had ruled out esoteric forces such as astrology, uh, karma. And I was having a conversation with Bob and Bob is one of my mentors. Bob told me a lot of stuff about LLCs and everything. Bob was an older dude at the time. Bob was probably 70 and he was working and he had a young wife. He was 70. His wife was 45. Bob had it going on. And Bob and I were in up my office and, you know, we we're just chatting because we we're really, we got along very, really, really well. And I was like, you know, Bob, recently I have re-identified my relationship with karma. I don't think that karma exists. And he slapped the table. He said, boy, you have arrived. He said, karma is some bullshit. He said, karma is something that poor people feel will level the playing field. Because if you will notice, once you start to get around progressive folks, they don't believe in karma. Because they know it's bullshit, right? So he, he's like, and we, we, we chucked it up and I was like, yeah, I used to believe in karma and astrology. And then he told me something that kind of made me pause. He said, he said, once you let that go, your life went in overdrive, didn't it? And I was like, yeah, how'd you know? And he told me the story. He himself used to be a slave to those social convictions himself. He said, I used to believe in karma. I used to believe in, um, he was talking about, He's like bad people. And then he told me something that literally blew my mind. He said, once he let karma, because this is a story I got his wife. His wife was dating his friend and he took her from his friend. And he said, I didn't care. I didn't give a damn. I just had to have her. And I took her and he said that ended the friendship and everything. But he and his wife had been married at that point. Cause I think she was 45 and he was 70 and they had been married like 20 years, which means he got her at 25. And Bob, you know, to his credit, Bob didn't look his age. Bob didn't act his age. Bob would like jump up. He run around. He was very, very spry. I mean, you would think he was like in his forties. You would like kind of be shocked to hear he was 70, but you know, and he told me that he had went through the same process. He went through the same process. He said, when I started to let, cause he said, I'm just a country boy from Tennessee and that's how I was raised. And he said, when I let that stuff go, he said, my life took off. He said, it just took off. Cause see, here's the thing. Cause I have a lot of you who are coming at me and you want to use the car rental business, right? Okay. If the car rental business was a representative of karma, why did I make a million dollars from my other business while the car business was going up and car rental business was going up in flames. It's plain because I hit someone up. I was like, okay, if that's karma, why did I make uh, a million dollars? Why did I move into this apartment and start meeting all these beautiful, uh, amazing women? If karma was coming, because see, one of the things that's really hard for people to understand, and this is something that I saw that was really devastating. And someone said, I got him when I was talking about sickle cell anemia and all this other stuff, because he has sickle cell anemia. One of the things that is very hard for the average person to understand, God doesn't care. So it's hard because everyone wants to feel, I am a good person and good things should happen to me because I'm a good person. It, don't work that way. <laughs> you can be evil. You can be evil and have a great life. And you can be a super kind, warm person and struggle and struggle. Cause Bob and I, we, we, we went to dinner one night and we were talking about that. And uh, it, it was really interesting cause he brought his wife and she was talking about that and talking about how she was dating his friend and then, you know, Bob, he said, she said, Bob put that magic on me. I was like, what, what, what magic, what, what magic does Bob have? And she's like, 
She said, he dig me down. <laughs> I was like, Bob! <laughs> Bob put that thing on her. And she's like, we've been together ever since. So what I have learned is, and this kind of goes back to the, once again, I recommend you get the book of the power of your subconscious mind by Dr. Joseph Murray. And you will find the process because this is why so many people believe in karma. And this is why people think that karma is a real thing in their life. And I want you guys to hear me and hear me well. When you hold a concept in your mind and this concept is deeply embedded, this concept will influence your whole life. Because once I like that book told me because this girl, you know, if you believe that people are sent into your life to teach you lessons, I believe like I call her duck lips because she's the cutest little lips. I believe she was sent in my life to teach me the lesson that karma wasn't real and that astrology wasn't real because all of the charts said that she would be the absolute worst possible match. And we never had an argument. I remember our fourth date, we went to the Cheesecake Factory, which is closed here on Peachtree. And we were just sitting there and we were having a good date. And the waitress was like, how long y'all been together? Y'all make such a beautiful couple. And we were like, three weeks. She said, really? Y'all look like y'all been together forever. And we consistent, like that is one of my regrets because uh, we broke up over some foolishness that was my fault because I was making money, I, was, I had access, and I was seeing multiple women and she didn't go down for that. And I remember the last conversation we had, she says, that's just who you are. And I'm not gonna stop you from being who you are, but I can't be with you the way that you are. And she kissed me and she left and I never saw her again. And that was a lesson for me because that woman should be my wife right now. That woman should be my wife. And it took many, many years of me dating women because essentially once you experience something like that, the easy reciprocity, the easy conversation, the instant sexual chemistry. Uh, I have found parts of that since her, but I have not found all of that since her. And we never had a fight. I remember one time we went on a drive and we weren't even talking. We was just enjoying each other's company. And I messed up. I can say that I messed up on that because I didn't understand what I had at that time. I had no clue to what I had. And, you know, I got into all of the freaky deaky stuff and everything. I had a lot of wonderful experiences. But to this day, I still think about her. I know where she is and she's not married, but, you know, I believe that she was sent in my life to teach me a lot of valuable lessons, which I am grateful for, because once again, and I'm about to get into this, why? you feel karma is real. If you get into the book, The Power of Your Subconscious Mind, you have programmed yourself to react and to make karma real. Because in your mind, because you think karma is real, you will subconsciously do things to make karma feel and look real. And once you turn that off, karma doesn't impact your life. Cause this person like everyone wants to go to the car business It's like okay how about all this other positive stuff like until i shut it down the car business was the only bad thing in my life that was it there was nothing else in it so the car business isn't bad juju or and once again so many simple ass folks who like well if you you having bad things you must have did something I worked in the children's hospital and I saw innocent children die every day who didn't do nothing. When you see a six month old baby die, what did that baby do? And then it was like, well, the parents did something. Once again, and someone asked in the comments, do I believe in higher power? Yes, I do believe in God. And yes, I do believe in other forms of life, not necessarily little green men, but I don't think that we're the only form of life in the universe. I don't think that I'm not that arrogant. And 
you know, people like my relationship with God is once again, God doesn't care. This is why little innocent babies die. This is why a girl who's 13 in Chicago gets shot in her bedroom because gang, God doesn't care. He doesn't care. It is like, look, I put you on the earth. You're going to do what you need to do. And it's on you. And once you take the understanding and know that you have to like, I mean, little duck lips got me out of that astrology stuff because uh, I will describe her. She was five foot nothing. She was black. Um, she had long natural hair to about the middle of her back that she pressed and wore it flat. And she had the perfect little titties. Oh my God, they were perfect. <clears throat> and she had a crazy little hip structure because her hips went bam, like that. And like when she would be naked and she would turn, I was just like, God, I mean, I messed up. I messed up, I messed up. Because she was, she was a beautiful woman and she was a beautiful soul. It is so rare to find someone like that because people would just meet her and do stuff for her because she just had that aurora about herself. She just had that presence that people instantly liked her, treated her well, and I'm quite sure that she's still getting those kind of benefits because that's just how her energy rolled. And I was like looking at this because as I go through it, like many of you will fight me on this karma thing because you've been indoctrinated with karma, that karma is a real thing. You've been, it is part of your belief system. Karma isn't real, but your belief system is real. And if your belief system says that if you do something bad to someone, that you're going to get a calm, a cosmic slap up the head, you're going to do something to make sure you get that slap on the head. But if you free yourself from the concept and the belief system of karma, you can go out and kill some and nothing gonna happen. You go out and kill somebody and nothing gonna happen in your life. There are people right now, and this is why the show is called The First 48. If they don't solve that murder within the first 48 hours, typically they don't get solved. So you literally have people walking around right now who have killed people. You've got people, you got someone who's killed multiple people, married with kids, living a wonderful, happy life. And if karma was real, this person wouldn't just be in jail. This person would have suffered a horrible fate. Because see, one of the things that as you start to gain power and influence is you find out like, you know, call me boasting, but I don't worry about normal bills. I don't worry about rent. I don't worry. I, I just pay those bills because I always have the money to pay them. I don't, I don't worry about them. That they don't occupy any part of my brain. It's like, oh, it's a bill. Just pay it. And my life's been like that for decades. So I don't focus on bills. And one of the things that it makes it hard for the unsuccessful. And once again, to my hardworking entrepreneurs who are working on their first business, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to you, these egotistical assholes who want to dicker with me, yet they don't have my level of success. My first business, GC Solution, was success. The second version of that business was not a success because I was sold for, used office furniture the first time, and the second time I sold new and I made a lot of mistakes. And then GC Solutions, the upscale garage sale, was successful. And then the first version of my YouTube business, which was called the Hustler's Mindset Project, was successful. And then I went through a period where I had a lot of failures. I launched a lot of products that didn't do nothing, didn't hit, people didn't like them. And I learned that before you release a product, you need to make sure that there's an audience. <laughs> I learned that lesson the hard way because I would release something and then I would put it on YouTube and then I would like, yeah, the price is gonna go up super high in like two weeks. And I wasn't really successful. I mean, I, I went through that period for about two, two, about almost three years of launching products that were not, and I was like, okay, what am I doing wrong? What am I doing wrong? And then I kind of hit onto it, and then I created the Hustler, Hustlers, 
hustlerskungfu.com that took off. That took off. And then after that died down, I created B School for Hustlers and that took off. And then I created the corporate toolbox and that took off. And I created the corporate papers and that took off. So I, I have a firm understanding from failure because this is one of the things like with the car rental business, I took it out. I'm not going to sit here and pretend it didn't happen. It's documented. And some of the people were like, man, I love those kill switch chronicles because they're full of fuckery. <laughs> I mean, who would have ever thought that it would rent a car to someone and they would sell a car two days later on Craigslist? Just, I mean, I am still boggled by that. And it got so bad with the car thefts that the Sandy Springs Police Department said, we're not gonna investigate these anymore. You're gonna to have to go downtown to file your warrant to get these people arrested. Cause I had 18 and I had an understanding cause about six months in, I had enough data to realize, cause I had the thoughts like, I'm getting out of this. I didn't talk about it on YouTube and like I did recently, but I kind of knew that it was coming to an end because the metrics just were horrible and they were terrible and they were disastrous. And I was like, this is not a good business for me because there is a way to make the car rental business successful. I would have to spend about $1.52 million, which I am not going to do. I, I'm like, mm-mm. I'm because I already know what I'm getting myself into. Every problem that I would have would go 10x. Now I would have staff and people to handle that, but I just started looking, you know, it, the expenses of buying the cars, I would have to have my own facility. That's going to be 10, 15,000 a month just to rent a place to park 200 and 300 cars and have staff. And then the staff's going to be 30, 40,000 a month. So between staff and the building, we're at about almost 55, $60,000 of overhead that has to be paid regardless if I make a penny or not. And then hire car, hire car is funky. The website is funky. Uh, this is something I haven't talked about. Communications, like someone can send you a message and it's, it's like they really need to reinvest in their website because I would not get that message until I log in because it, it was so funny because I had to learn how to, I would log into, I would log in my phone and I would have like three or four windows open and that's how I would read my message because you can log into the main site and you will not see those messages. But if you have other windows open, that's how I saw my messages. And another issue is high card doesn't alert you when you get a message. There's no the app doesn't do that. So you have to be looking for it. And I missed a lot of communications. I didn't get them until the next day or many, many hours later. And it's just very, very frustrating. So with high car as my business partner, I had no faith in that. I had no faith in that. And also, with the credit repair business, once again, as some people in the comments correctly identified, I will be dealing with the same people. And I will be dealing with them different because I already made it in my mind, if I go forward with the credit repair business, I'm gonna hire two people. I'm gonna hire someone to be on the phone to do the consultations, I'm gonna hire someone to do the disputes. I am not gonna be part of that because one of the things that I have learned about myself is I love my freedom. Like right now, it's the middle of the day and I'm doing this video. I can, this is my life. You know, I have, a tr you know, since I stopped renting cars and I stopped having all these problems, I have so much time freedom to do what I want to do. And this is, you know, this is part of the plan because after I got out of the storage auction business, I wrote a goal of I wanted to have a business that provided me a lot of time. And going forward, I don't know what kind of business I'm gonna start. I will be starting another business, but once again, I am not gonna get into any of these highly hassle-laden businesses. They have a lot of problems and issues because with the car rental business, that thing with the tires, that's a sensitive issue. I mean, it is a sensitive issue for me. I was just, I was going off on people. I was like, you ran over something and it's like, Hey bro, why are you blaming me? I'm like, cause you ran over something. When you got the car with the tires flat? No, now the tires are flat. That means you ran over something. And it, it became such a big issue because they would call me 
with the expectation that I would fix the car. Now, here's the thing. Some of these cars didn't have a spare. So I would have to tow the car, put a new tire on it. And that's like, on the cheap side, that's $300, $400. Now, here's the thing. And here's the math on the car rentals. And this is why it's like, you have to have the expense of buying the car, but the money trickles in. So, and this is one of the reasons that I started renting cars out on E. And a lot of people were annoyed because I'm like, yeah, that's how they brought it back. Because with the high price of gas, if someone rents a car with a full tank of gas and they bring it on E, that's like two days of rental. So they just stole two days of rental if I go ahead and fill up that car. And I was just like, I was sick and tired of people bringing back the car, on, not just E, fumes. They would bring the car back running on fumes because with the BMWs, it would tell you estimated. They brought that BMW X5 estimated mileage was two miles, two miles. The lack of consideration with this population is epic. It is epic. I'm just sitting there like, you knew you were supposed to bring that car back with full tank of gas. But once again, karma ain't real. And a lot of you have used a very simple, it's like, well, something bad that he must have did something and that would be karma. And I like, I saw all kinds of stuff. Now, I'm about to tell you how my life is. You know what time I wake up? 8.30, 9 o'clock. That's what time I wake up. Uh, I usually go to bed at 10, 11.30. I do what I wanna do with my day. I, Cause once I get rid of this car re rental business, I stopped being pulled into these situations, which was just annoying because I would wake up and I would have my day plan to do X and it's like, oh, this happened and this happened and this happened and this. I got sick of that. I got really, really sick of that. And one of the things that um, I come to understand about the car rental business and also I'm a successful entrepreneurs with other businesses, so I don't have to do the car rental business. And the car rental business is one of these social media driven things where I feel that if people were doing accurate accounting, they would realize they're not making as much money as they think they are because Toro has slowed. And once again, a lot of people have left the hire car platform a lot, a lot. Cause there used to be like 20 pages. There's nine right now, nine. And when you can't see the cars that are rented, but I don't think, 10 pages of cars are rented, not with the economy slowing down, not with the economy slowing down. But one of the things that I want you guys to realize, if you choose to believe in karma, karma becomes real because you have the mindset that karma is real. And you have put that in your mind and it's become a real breathing, living thing in your life. And once you start to elevate, because this is something I have seen, like, you know, if you know the story of how I got the job at Rent-A-Crate, I'll, I'll tell it to you again. I got fired from, I got, well, laid off, fired, same thing, you don't have a job, from T-Mobile, and I went home that night and I constructed a plan. And I, I figured out jobs that I could do, but I didn't have a reference. So I created my own reference, Mr. Patel, and it worked. And that was one of my first successful, um, you know, uh, projects. Let's call it a project. Because I sat down, I thought of it. I'm actually, it was written down what I was doing and it worked. And I got the job at rent crate And from that moment on until now, my life has been on an upward trajectory. Now, if karma was real, and let's just go ahead and keep it a buck. I lied to get a job. If karma is real, why did that lie? It was a lie. Work. And why haven't I been punished for it? I actually lied to get this job. But karma's real. And I'm going to tell you some stuff. When I was in the storage auction business, I was the apex predator. When people would... Like, there's this thing in the storage trucks business called running someone up. And what you would do is bid on units that you weren't interested in, 
because it would flush the pockets of your competition. And I became really, really good at running folks up because I studied body language. So I would study their body language and I would figure out when they were getting ready to get off and I would get off before they got off and I had people hot. I was evil. I was up in their asses. And I remember one day I rolled up to an auction and everyone started groaning. It's like, oh God, he's here. That's who I was. I was that dude. And I remember uh, a seasoned auction person was telling the newbie, he said, you don't want to mess with him. If you go ahead and bid against him and you, he will come after you for months. I've seen it. You don't. So I had to develop this reputation and they were warning people. And this one guy, uh, actually, he was new. He had a little money and he bid against me and I bid against him for six months straight. I actually ran him off. He, he didn't come back after I got finished with him because I made him buy some bad units. I knew these units were really, really bad, really, really bad. And I actually intentionally made him buy bad units by duking it out with him. And I have done a lot of things that would, that would be considered kind of evil. How come I haven't been punished for that? See, this whole notion that you're a good person and nothing bad going to happen to you because you are a good person is completely erroneous. Um, you can f walk out your house and a rock from space can fall down and bust you up across your head. God doesn't care. When we're down here, we're on our own. We're on our own. And then if I were to get into my kinky escapades, which I am not, um, the things that I have done and have suffered no ill consequences from would literally blow your mind. I might talk about that on my uh, one of my digital assets because I'm not going to talk about that stuff on YouTube because people cannot understand. Well, people lose their minds over the primitive action of women. Like one of the, once again, when I start disruptive male again, I will get into that. But all of my saucy content like that, that's going to be on my site. Because one of the things that I realized from the last episode of people trying to cancel me, you people were so cute. It's like, we're going to cancel you. It's like you and what army? We're going to cancel you. They're like, who's we? We the people. You mean you the people who are working jobs that you hate? You the people who don't even have $2,000 for emergency? You the people who don't have control of your life? You people are actually going to do something to me. Really? You can't even manage your own life, but you collectively are going to get together and do something to me. Okay. Bring it on. And uh, <laughs> I didn't get canceled as much as people wanted to cancel me. It's like, and I, I still get comments it's like, why is this guy still on YouTube? Dear sir, your opinion of me doesn't impact what I will do with my life because you are a nobody. You're a nobody. You have no agency. None. So keep it. You can put that in your pocket and smoke it. But once again, karma is only real if you believe it is real. That's it. Karma is real if, if it's only real. And also, once again, this is going to be part of the new training that I'm going to do either the middle of February after Super Bowl Sunday. I'm not trying to compete with the NFL or, you know, uh, after football is over, I'm going to start doing Sunday trainings. And one of the first courses is this mindset stuff, because if you understood your mindset, because once again, I'm not going to get into it here. It is incredibly powerful if you can reshape and redirect and set up your mindset correctly. It is incredibly powerful. And I'm going to do a whole course, a whole training on that. And then I will be sharing some stuff that I'm not going to talk about anymore on YouTube. And this is funny. I get all these assholes. It's like, why would you take the video down? And I get a lot of people who want me to come on their channel so they can beat me up. And they're like, yeah, I've asked you four times. I'm like, dude, there that is no benefit for me to come on your funky little channel and have you and your your yard birds beat me up. That, why would I want to do that? Because I have like every day I have someone that's like, hey, come on the channel. Let's do a live and let's chop it up. I'm like, you don't want to have an honest conversation. You just want views. 
That's all you want. You're not trying to help me in my agenda. And what I do, what I do, sat down, I worked hard and in two months, I got 35,000 subscribers and I'm supposed to be canceled. And I'm going to tell you how I did it. I'm going to tell you right now. I put it in my mind to ignore all of that noise and to work hard on my content. That's what I did. I didn't get into it. I didn't go after people. I was like, you know what? You've been through this before. You've been through this a number of times. At some point it's going to die down and it started to die down November. It really died down December and in January, because right now I get people who leave a comment. Isn't this the dude who supports R. Kelly? Is this the dude? Is this the dude? Is this the dude? Not you're the dude. So that's all. Good Lord. So that's all I got for you guys. Once again, karma is not real. And I'm going to do some training for the people who want to be students of the Institute of Economic Thought. Like, give me some time to put this together and I will. And it's going to be a wonderful course. And this is not going to be as pricey as my corporate stuff. It's not going to be anywhere near that because it's a different level of training. Because if you can harness the power of your thought process, you can change your life. You can simply change your life. So that's all I got for you guys. I will talk to you in the next one.